If you're in the market for a new vacuum cleaner, mostly for DIY, but also maybe for household jobs, you might like to take a look at today's video, because last week I bought this Titan 30 litre wet and dry vacuum cleaner, and I'm gonna be pitting it against my dear old Henry. Now, I'm a massive fan of Henry's. Generally speaking, I wouldn't buy any other vacuum. I've owned this Henry for 19 years now, and it's been brutally put to work over the years in my last house refurb, um, vacuuming up brick dust, Victorian soot, as well as being used as a day-to-day -day vacuum. It's pretty bulletproof for general household tasks, but the problem is when you're using it for DIY, the bags fill up pretty quickly, and this one here, you see, is actually only half full, but it's full of building rubble, and the vacuum very quickly starts to overheat, and I have to constantly pick it up and tip it to get the rubble to the back of the bag so that I can squeeze a little bit more dust into the bag. And for those of you that say, well, don't use a bag then, mm, I'm not a big fan of that. I've seen a lot of builders on building sites that I work on using Henry's without the bag, and it massively shortens the life of the motor. And if I'm going to be honest, this has never been as powerful since I switched out the 1100 watt motor that died a couple of years ago with a 620 watt replacement. Now, I'm currently in the middle of refurbishing our bedroom and I want to remove all this dust and rubble before insulating. So that's why I finally decided to take the leap to buy a vacuum which is more specifically designed for DIY stroke building tasks. So why Titan? Well, Titan's obviously a Screwfix own brand. I don't have any affiliation to Screwfix. This video obviously isn't paid for or sponsored. But you might have seen my recent SDS drill video. But I just think with Titan, you get so much tool for your money. In the range, you've got four different sizes. You've got the 16 litre, the 20 litre, the 30 litre, and the 40 litre, ranging from 34.99 up to 74.99, as you can see here. I've decided to plump for the 30 litre because I think it will have plenty of capacity with 25 litres of dry, as opposed to 19 litres of wet, whilst being still portable. And you get a whopping 1400 watts of power compared to your typical Henry, which has 620. So the first thing you notice is how it dwarfs my tiny little nine litre Henry. You've got a little bit of work to do out of the box, screwing on the side handles and putting the little wheels on. And other than that, the vacuum's ready to go. In terms of build quality, I would say this is a no frills but functional product. Metal tank compared to the plastic base of the Henry, which is actually no bad thing because my old Henry has a split in its base that I've had to just improvise with a piece of duct tape. But I've got to say there's something very no nonsense about it, which you'd sort of expect for a vacuum cleaner that costs just 54 quid. When compared with your typical Henry, which is gonna set you back about 135 quid. Lifting off the top, it's more like a sort of kitchen bin than a vacuum. And I was struck by the fact that you've got this massive air filter, which it was a bit of a shame initially in terms of taking away some of the capacity that you would otherwise have inside the vacuum. But the 25 litre capacity is nearly three times that of my Henry. Which is all the more obvious when you compare the paper bag that comes supplied with the pneumatic Henry equivalent. With the vacuum you get the instruction and safety manual, a load of attachments which I'll come on to in a minute, and a foam sleeve for use during wet applications which I won't be using today. But which is basically fitted by removing the existing air filter and fitting the foam sleeve in its place, which is a reasonably fiddly process, but one which doesn't take more than a minute or two. motor section is fixed down to the tank using these plastic clips and I've got to say when the clips are in place there is a bit of a disconcerting wobble or looseness between the, the motor and the cylinder base but to be fair this disappears when you switch the motor on so I've bought five replacement paper bags 
but also some tear resistant bags because I have found in the past with my pneumatic bags, Henry bags, that the paper bags are slightly liable to tear. And this bag, as you can see, is an absolute monster. Look at the size of that. Works for the 20 to 40 litre models. So as I said at the start, this is an unashamedly no frills machine. And that is particularly evident when you look at the hose, which is definitely of a thinner grade plastic than the Henry equivalent, and which simply pushes into the vacuum. You'd want it really to screw in. And the other accessories, which I would say are the worst thing about this vacuum. And the tube, rather than being steel, is this slightly ridiculous plastic telescopic arrangement. And worst of all, that is your main vacuum head, which as you can see is just light as a feather. It doesn't, isn't really made of anything. It's a, very, it's a very cheap, pliable bit of plastic compared with your sort of Henry equivalent. And again, the brush attachment when compared with the uh, Henry equivalent is a little bit basic. So I've got to say, you're going to be hard pushed to vacuum all your carpets in your house with this. Unless, of course, you've got an existing pneumatic like I have, which the Titan hose handily connects to. But even if you don't, you can get a tube set from eBay for £19.99 or the full replacement Henry kit from the official Henry shop for £40. So if you want something that's a bit more of an all-rounder straight out the box, the Stanley Fat Max caught my eye in, in the course of doing research for this video. At 1600 watts it's a little bit more powerful, it's got a slightly smaller dry capacity at 22 litres, but crucially it does have better quality looking accessories and of course a stainless steel tube, but it is double the price. So those are some negatives and they may actually not be negatives once we start using the tool in a minute, but let's end on some positives because I think you're really going to like these. Number one, the 30 litre vacuum comes with this universal power tool adapter. Do be careful if you're buying the 16 and 20 litre because they do not seem to have this in the specifications. What this enables you to do is to plug the vacuum into a power tool. Tools like my circular saw which produce so much sawdust will be useful for this. Gotta say that it doesn't fit particularly well in my circular saw but that doesn't matter because the circular saw comes with its own adapter which the vacuum hose itself fits into really well. And similarly my chop saw has its own adapter which the vacuum nozzle fits into, removing the need to use the universal adapter that comes with the vacuum, which is just as well because it doesn't actually fit into the chop saw. But I suspect there'll be lots of tools that this universal power tool adapter will be useful for. And anyone out there who has found use for this, let me know in the comments section below. Which brings us perfectly onto the next feature, which is a built-in socket which allows a power tool like, a, I don't know, circular saw, sander, drill, to be plugged in directly into the cover assembly. And then by toggling it onto the automatic mode, the vacuum is triggered when you turn on the tool. The only downside of this is there's a maximum of 1600 watts that you can draw from that socket, which unfortunately rules out my 2000 watt chop saw. And finally, there's a really useful blower feature. By taking the nozzle off the front and plugging it in the back, you can convert your vacuum into a powerful blower. You might ask why you need one of these, but I tell you, I bought this Ryobi leaf blower about a year ago, and it is the most fantastic way of ridding all your power tools of sawdust when you finish using them. And not only power tools, but workbenches anywhere you, where you've been working, where there's lots of debris and dust. So that's a lovely free extra. So I'm going to do this test by vacuuming in between these joists. And it's pretty good comparison because certainly up to here, the joists have an equal amount of dust between them from front to back. So I put a new HEPA filter bag in the Henry. There. We're going to start this challenge with the Henry.
could continue, but this bag is pretty much full now. To have done those two gaps between the joists on one bag, I've got to say is pretty impressive. But when I carry on vacuuming now, you hear that noise now? That is the motor on my Henry having decided had enough because the bag is full. Now it's the turn of the Titan. And for this, I'm going to put one of the tear resistant heifer bags on just to keep the challenge consistent. Okay, this is the first issue. These telescopic tubes are getting clogged up because they're so narrow. You compare them with the diameter of the Henry and you can see the substantial difference and that could be crucial in hoovering up these pieces of rubble, which I'm trying to do at the moment. The other thing is with the Henry stainless steel tubes, you can scoop at these slightly bizarre muddy deposits I've got here between the lath and plaster of the ceiling below and sort of vacuum it away. Whereas the problem with having an all plastic component like this is you just don't really feel, you don't really want to, you don't feel comfortable doing that because you're obviously going to be massively knackering the plastic. And of course I couldn't get between the joists with the um, light plastic head. So I'm going to have to unblock this. This time we're blocked up in the end of the tube. And again, if you compare the diameter of the internal diameter of the tube of the Titan with the Henry, you'll see again that it's much narrower. More blockages inside the tube, I'm afraid. Both vacuums have so far done an equal amount of work in that they have both vacuumed two channels between the joists. But whereas the Henry did the entire thing without blocking once, I've had about 10 blockages in the Titan. I thought it'd be significant also to look inside the vacuum at this stage to see how effective the bags are. Now the, the pneumatic pepper flow bags have always been fantastic at containing all the dust. There's very little residual dust around the bag, which means that the bag itself is protecting the motor with added protection from the secondary filter. This is my first view inside the Titan, and it'll be really interesting to see what we find. So there's a couple of interesting things to note, which I'm really disappointed by actually. Even with this premium tear resistant bag, we've got dust coated the inside of the vacuum. And you can also see there's a big pile of it on the floor of the drum. Now, I suspect this is in no small part due to the seal, the tightness of the seal between the bag and the vacuum. That almost just fell off there when I touched it because the rubber ring, which is meant to create a tight seal, I just don't think is adequate. In terms of the bag itself, as you would expect, it's nowhere near full yet. So we've got plenty of additional vacuuming to come. But as somebody who likes using vacuum bags, I think they preserve massively the lifetime of the vacuum. That's why my Henry's lasted for 19 years. You can see here, this is such a pity. There is dust all over this air filter. So much so it's dropping off when I tap it. So the bag is not doing any good at all. Worth pointing out that the paper bag is just as bad. If anything, it slips off easier than the other bag because the diameter of the rubber seal is even wider. 
probably frustrating when you think that this is a design thing feature that's so easy to get right. Look at the HEPA flow bag for the Henry. It's got a rubber seal with a much smaller diameter in relation to the hose inlet and when you push it on even with the hose inlet being quite dusty you've got a really tight seal and that's not coming off on its own accord whereas this one on the other hand just come just drops off now a lot of you out there will be saying well you're getting a bit obsessed about this charlie none of us use these vacuums with the bags on but the point is even the structures themselves say if you're hoovering up fine dust like we are today you need to use a bag to prevent it getting into the motor but come on guys the bag that you've designed clearly doesn't stop the dust getting into the motor, even with the air filter fitted. Because, because what it means is if, like me, you want to prolong the life of your vacuum, you've got to spend a lot of time on a regular basis cleaning the filter. So I continue to vacuum and get three quarters of the room done still on the same initial bag, which is pretty impressive. However, a look into the drum itself at this point shows that the dust buildup outside the bag is more than ever. So I decide to do my own modification on the vacuum. I take the air filter outside, give it a really good clean with my Ryobi leaf blower, and then apply self-amalgamating tape around the tube inlet nozzle so that when I push the bag back on, I've got a much tighter seal. I then continue to vacuum the rest of the room. Quick look inside the vacuum now. We don't have anything like as much dust now on the air filter. And although there's still a reasonable amount of dust collected inside the drum, the bag has been more efficient at collecting the dust. And for all those of you saying it functions perfectly well without a bag, let's have a quick look at how much dust the air filter has kept out of the motor. I would say there's a reasonable amount of dust buildup inside the air filter. And nobody's going to tell me that that filter without the bag is keeping the vacuum motor dust free. So I'm sorry everyone you've had to sit through 17 minutes of a vacuum review. I'll try and wrap this up pretty quickly. Where does that leave us? Well, what you can't deny is that one vacuum has eradicated a room of hundreds of years of dust and soot. It's been pretty miserable working in here at times, can't lie. Now we can insulate and if I ever drop the ceiling downstairs, there'll be hardly any dust as a result, which was the intention. Looking at the Titan vacuum bag compared to the pneumatic, you can see that the capacity of the Titan is absolutely enormous. And that side of it, you can't deny, is brilliant. But I just wish they designed the seal on the bag better to prevent dust escaping out of the bag. Will I be using this vacuum going forward? 100% yes, it's so much more powerful than the Henry and will probably replace my Henry as my DIY vacuum. I also like the fact that you can connect power tools, but obviously I'm gonna to have to be careful what sort of grade of sawdust or whatever I'm producing, just given how easily it blocked today. And that brings me on to these accessories. I've got to say, these plastic accessories are poor and I think at the very least, Titan should have produced a stainless steel tube set to go with this machine and a wider diameter hose that just doesn't block so easily. So I hope you found today's video useful. Do let me know in the comment section below what machines you use for your DIY or building jobs. I'd be really interested to know if there's a great machine out there that strikes a really good balance between price and quality. I suppose a Stanley Fat Max is a possibility, but then look at the price jump to the DeWalt at 460 pounds with mixed reviews and an inferior power takeoff wattage. In the meantime, thank you again for watching today's video. If you've enjoyed it, please click on the like button below. And as I always say, if you're new to my channel, I would absolutely love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.